Let's begin with the breaking news out of Florida, where Taylor Budowich, a top aide to Donald Trump in his post-presidency, has just entered the federal district courthouse in Miami. That's the same courthouse where a grand jury is expected to hear testimony this week in the special counsel's investigation into the former president. Our team is in Florida and Washington. NBC News Justice correspondent Ryan Riley is in our Washington newsroom standing by for us. But I want to start with MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin, who is outside that courthouse in Miami. Lisa, what more can you tell us about Taylor Budowich? Well, Anna, this morning we knew that we could expect a witness in the grand jury here in Miami in the federal courthouse. We got lucky this morning. We witnessed Stan Woodward, who is a lawyer for multiple witnesses, and this investigation walk into the courthouse. And then we saw a shorter man by his side, bearded, and he was immediately spotted by our own Von Hilliard, who said, that's Taylor Budowich. Taylor Budowich was former President Trump's former spokesperson. He is now the head of the Trump super PAC, MAGA Inc. And you might be wondering, what is Taylor Budowich doing in this investigation as a spokesperson or head of Trump's PAC? Well, Taylor Budowich made a number of statements to the press in connection with the National Archives' efforts to get documents that President Trump had with him returned first to the archives. And then when that morphed into an FBI DOJ investigation, Taylor Budowich again was making statements on the former president's behalf, calling it a witch hunt, even, uh, even accusing the FBI of colluding with The Washington Post and its reporting that among those documents were those relating to a foreign country's nuclear capacities. And it remains to be seen how long Taylor Budowich will be in the grand jury today, but it's our understanding he is that witness we've been waiting for, Anna. As you mentioned, that the grand jury was expected to hear testimony this week there in Florida in this special counsel probe. I, I wonder, because our understanding is that much of the testimony before this was in D.C., Lisa, is it possible Jack Smith is moving venues, or is it more likely it's just for this specific witness or, or further investigation into a specific event in Florida that they're trying to drill, drill down on? You know, Anna, it remains to be seen. Certainly, we had reporting earlier this week from the Wall Street Journal that this was just about wrapping up loose ends in the investigation. However, with reporting this morning from The Guardian and others, including The New York Times last night, that there are now multiple witnesses expected to be heard by this grand jury, I think it's safer to bet that some charges could emanate out of the federal district court in Miami, whether those are charges against the former president or solely against those in his orbit who helped facilitate the retention and obstruction of the documents in question also remains to be seen. If I were a betting person, I would say we might see some charges out of this courthouse as well as the one in D.C., Anna. Ryan, let's talk more about what we're learning regarding who else has testified. What does it mean for the special counsel's investigation to have the testimony from Mark Meadows, Trump's former chief of staff, and at least 20 Secret Service agents? I mean, having the Secret Service agents uh, is really big because obviously Secret Service agents follow around uh, the president all day. And, you know, I don't suspect that anyone would be feel all that comfortable if they had people who were guarding them all day testifying about uh, their activities. This is a pretty universal access that they have uh, to uh, the intricacies of, of, of someone's life. So they really just know his patterns and practices and his, uh, his ways of handling classified information in the past. And typically that's a wall that the Secret Service uh, holds up pretty strongly. But, you know, here, basically, the special uh, counsel has been able to, to crack that wall and figure out um, some more broader questions about uh, President Donald Trump's habits. With Mark Meadows, obviously, he's there at those key moments. We heard that dramatic testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson about some of Meadows' activities um, right before January 6th in the final days of the Trump administration. And, you know, we heard some of these stories that uh, viewers will probably remember about there being uh, catch up, you know, on the wall. So Meadows is, is around for all of those key moments. And he's also part of this effort to pressure the Justice Department uh, to basically use the Justice Department as a tool to try to overturn the election. Um, he was sending information to some top Justice Department officials, some sort of just really like trash information uh, that was not believable at all um, about some of uh, these claims of voter fraud, um, including from someone who's later parodied on SNL because their testimony was so ridiculous next to Rudy Giuliani. So, I mean, there's just been a, lot, a lot of information that I think Meadows will have about these key moments in these final days of uh, the Trump presidency. Um, and, you know, that's something that we've seen a lot of him sort of 
be, we've seen a lot of his messages that were sent in those final days, but we haven't really heard directly from Meadows himself. So that's a little bit of a vulnerability, I think, uh, for the president going forward, depending on how Meadows' uh, situation all shakes out. So, Lisa, let's zero in on Meadows even more. He has kept a, a low profile through most of this. We now know he testified, according to the New York Times. Put those things together, his private testimony and his public silence and what he could have provided in this probe. No, and I want to add a third element to that, and that's the statement that his lawyer, George Terwilliger, gave to the New York Times yesterday, in which he essentially said that his client, Mark Meadows, has given testimony where he was legally required to. And what's interesting about that is if Mark Meadows was neither given immunity or cooperation, he could have gone into the grand jury as compelled to do so by an order of District Court Judge Beryl Howell and just taken the Fifth Amendment because he does have some criminal exposure here. Here, as Ryan was just noting. But Terwilliger has now told the New York Times that his client, in fact, testified. And unless he's playing cute with his words, that leads me to believe that Mark Meadows did provide some information to prosecutors here. So that means, particularly coupled with his public relative silence, it may mean that Mark Meadows either has immunity or is cooperating or a combination of the two, Anna.